on water or land, foraging the forest with curiosity. Mike Meyer is at home in northern Wisconsin. I grew up in the area, and I know how rare eagles once were. As a research scientist with the Department of Natural Resources, Mike has come in contact with hundreds of eagles. About 520. It's at least that many now, uh, probably closer to 600. When his research began in the 1990s, most Northwoods visitors would have been happy to see just one eagle. In the days when we first started this work, it was still a rarity for folks to uh, see an eagle while they were up here. Now you can be on Main Street in Manaqua eating an ice cream cone and we have eagles that'll fly right over town. This past year, Mike and a team of experts were on a mission to study the health of Wisconsin's bald eagle population. Down here at the boat landing, we'll be straight across the lake to a point where it's in an aspen tree. We're going to 25 nests in Vilas, Oneida County, and up on the Lake Superior shoreline to ban bald eagle nestlings. It's no easy feat to reach an eagle's nest in white pines that can grow 100 feet straight up in what's described as a super canopy tree. When they build the nest, they don't make it convenient for the climber. Each tree is a different high wire act. He's got to find a way around the edge of the nest, but still stay attached to the tree. Getting around a nest that can be four to five feet in diameter can present a unique and sometimes dangerous encounter. We just noticed a uh, factor that's going to make this a little more difficult. Through the pine branches, Mike can see the eaglets wildly flapping their wings. Go slow. It's uh, probably a seven or eight week old chick which gives us a little pause. We call them jumpers. They can leave the nest before they should. So he'll be careful getting up there so that he doesn't spook the bird and cause it to uh, prematurely try to fly. This bird's eye view shows just how close to the edge the baby bald eagles are perilously perched, and they're still not quite old enough to soar. It had pretty good flight feathers. Flight feathers that can catch a gust of wind and blow the young eagles out of the nest. These are tense moments for the team. The climber works with caution and care. This bird is <laughs> almost ready to fly. It's okay. This bird is at least two weeks to three weeks older than the other birds we've sampled. Well, they're uh, a fearless animal that comes across as you're handling even the youngsters. Fully grown at just six weeks, their beak and talons already pose a serious threat, even if the climber wears protective gloves. The adult eagles are always nearby. Folks are always uh, anticipating that we'll answer by saying that they're uh, harassing the climber and diving into the nest, but that's not the case. At this nest, an eagle circles overhead in a holding pattern, but never swoops in to intervene. They'll uh, make noise and perch nearby, but they rarely, if ever, will even enter the nest while the climber is there. The eaglets are bagged and then carefully lowered to the ground. Got it. Then the research team goes to work in a makeshift outdoor lab. We collect the blood samples so that we can analyze their exposure to environmental contaminants like PCBs and pesticides. Back in the early 1990s, we were in the process of delisting bald eagles. The Great Lakes bald eagles in Wisconsin and Michigan had very high levels of contaminants. In areas uh, like this in northern Wisconsin, they had very low levels. Now we're back 25 years later to see how the chemical levels have changed in the Great Lakes areas and here in Vilas County. We already know that on the Great Lakes, uh, particularly on Lake Superior and the Green Bay Lake Michigan shoreline, the levels of PCBs and DDT have dropped about 50 to 80 percent. We take a feather sample to assess their mercury exposure too. So we have 11 cc's here. 
we'll measure the uh, primary feather lengths, 241 on the eighth primary. The size of the foot helps us determine what gender it is. The females are much larger than the males. So we measure the length of the foot pad. So now Brian is going to ban this bird. And this is a unique U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service metal band that helps us identify the bird if it's found again in the future. That's perfect. I think we got everything on this bird. This one's done. She can go back home. Okay, Dan, you can bring the first one up. There's your buddy. Hey, sis. How you doing? When we first sampled the eagles in Wisconsin in 1990, there was about 400 pair total in the state. There's now at least uh, 1,400. So it's almost quadrupled in number. For us in the conservation world, a good news story. Um, we have a population that was once endangered. I think we've cleaned up the environment for eagles to the point now where they can uh, pretty much take it from here.